Well, starting off at number 10, the Shanghai Tunnels in Portland, Oregon. Portland was one of the most dangerous ports in the United States during the early 19th century, and it was the epicenter of Shanghai, a form of human trafficking. It's crazy to think human trafficking still happens today, and tunnels are still the way to do it. According to the local lore, swinders preyed upon unsuspected men in the local salons, which were often outfitted with trap doors that deposited the victims directly into a network of underground tunnels. These men were supposedly held captive, drugged, and eventually transported to the waterfront where they were sold to ships as unpaid laborers, aka slaves. Some worked for several years before finding their way back home. The tunnels are said to be haunted by the aggrieved spirits of the captives who died in the dark recesses behind the city. Random facts, the practice of kidnapping men to work on ships came to be known as Shanghing because the ships that were sold to were often headed to East Asia. In our number nine spot today, we have Lake Nyos. So this isn't a place that is necessarily illegal to visit, but it definitely is a place that you should only live or even really visit at your own risk. Lake Nyos is located in Cameroon and it is different from any regular old lake because of the volcanic crater that it sits in. The magma floor releases carbon dioxide in both the water and the surrounding air, making it a less than ideal place to live and breathe. Usually the CO2 just dissipates into the air, mostly harmlessly, but in 1986 there was a limnic eruption that caused a catastrophe. A limnic eruption is very rare, but it's what happens when dissolved carbon dioxide suddenly erupts from lake waters, which then goes on to form a gas cloud. This resulting gas cloud is extremely dangerous and is capable of displacing the oxygen in the area, which of course is lethal to any living thing, which is exactly what happened in 1986. This limnic eruption caused a noxious cloud of more than 1 million tons of CO2. This ended up taking the lives of 1,700 people in the area, as well as 3,500 livestock, which made it the first known large-scale asphyxiation caused by a natural event. Despite the threat of another eruption, as well as the lake's weakening walls that could result in a massive flood, people have resettled the area around the lake. I'm not gonna lie, I wouldn't risk it, which makes me wonder why these people chose to. I'm sure there's got to be some reason though. In our number 8 spot today we have the Svalbard Seed Vault. Deep within a mountain that sits in between Norway and the North Pole sits this vault that is more than 320 feet inside. This vault holds a massive collection of seeds. Like we're talking about 890,000 different preserved seed samples from nearly every country in the world. The vault that holds these seeds is made to withstand both man-made and natural disasters and the seeds inside are meant to be kept safe so in the case of some sort of huge disaster, the seeds kept safe inside would ensure the continuation of a wide variety of really diverse food options. The door to this vault is only opened a few times a year and just a few people are allowed inside in order to deliver seeds to the shelves. In our number 7 spot today we have St Kilda. St Kilda is the most remote settlement of the British Isles and it is so isolated that it is often cut off by storms for weeks and sometimes even months at one time. That is most likely the reason as to why the previous inhabitants had developed a culture, economy, and government that was completely separate and different to their English rulers. Unfortunately, between missionaries and officials coming to the island in an attempt to change their way of life that was working perfectly fine for them, their sources of income dwindling, births not being able to keep up with the death rate, and the emigration rate combined, as well as the inevitable disease-ridden tourists coming to their island for whatever reason, things for those who once lived on the island changed drastically and it was decided that they would evacuate this island in 1930. Since then, people have tried to resettle the island, but none have permanently remained, likely because of the isolation. In our number 6 spot today, we have Surtsey Island. This island was born in 1963, and by that I mean it emerged from the sea in that year just off of the coast of Iceland after four years of being formed by an undersea volcano. A brand new island. What could we possibly do with that? While I'm sure humans could find a million and one ways to ruin it, surprisingly, we decided not to do that at all. Instead, this island was protected in order to allow scientists to study how new ecosystems form and what happens when there's really no human involvement in that. This means that those who are permitted to go to the island have some very strict rules to adhere to, and it's not like just anyone is allowed to go. I mean, I couldn't go, you probably couldn't go, well I don't want to make that assumption, I don't know, maybe you're a scientist. One of these rules is that there are no seeds 
allowed on the island, and no using the facilities either. The last rule is because one day when scientists found a tomato growing on the island, they were confused as to how. Turns out somebody had gone number two not too long before, and thus a new poop tomato was grown from the ground. Kind of gross, kind of cool, not gonna lie. In our number five spot today, we have Centralia. Located in Pennsylvania, this town is often referred to as one of the gateways to hell. That is due to the fire that spread in an underground coal mine underneath the town in 1962. Despite the years it's been, the fire still blazes underground, which causes the smoke and poisonous gases to rise up from the ground, not only causing an eerie appearance, but also a very serious health hazard. The temperatures can be so hot in areas that one guy's backyard was measured at 626 degrees Fahrenheit. Sometimes the fire will also burn through supports underground, which in the end turns into a sinkhole. This has caused pets, wildlife, and residents to unsuspectingly get swallowed up into the hole. In 1984, the US government ordered a total evacuation of the town, but a handful of residents refused to leave and even went to court over the right to stay in the town for as long as they live. In our number four spot today, we have Pine Gap. This location is in Australia and it is a heavily guarded and top secret facility. It is said that Pine Gap is actually a joint defense facility between the Australian and the United States governments. It is said that it is operated by both the CIA and NSA, that it is strictly off limits to anyone not involved or given high security clearance. Apparently, at first, this place was said to be a space research center, but now it has become abundantly clear that it is actually used to support the United States in both intelligence as well as military activities. If someone decided to trespass into this top secret area, it would undoubtedly put them in a whole world of trouble, kind of like an Area 51 deal. In our number three spot today, we have La Oroya. Located in Peru, this town has a population of 30,000 people, despite the metal smelter contamination that has been seen since 1922. The smelter closed in 2009 after the company that ran it declared bankruptcy, but here's how that happened in the first place. The American-owned company ran out of money because they had to fund the environmental cleanup and the anti-pollution measures. Seems like maybe they should have chosen a different path. Seems like it didn't pay off to pollute someone else's air. I don't know. I guess they forgot that there's consequences for actions. It still remains as one of the most polluted areas in the entire world, and the toxic metals have gone on to infect the water, the soil, and the air. While it is completely unsafe to live there, people still do, and sadly, they suffer the extreme adverse effects of it. In our number two spot today, we have Mezgor. This is a location in Russia that finds its home in the Ural Mountains. This little town is top secret and is completely forbidden to any kind of visitor. This is said to be because the town is apparently home to Russia's nuclear missiles, and the rules are so strict that people aren't even allowed near the town or its vicinity. There are also rumors that suggest that this town contains Mount Yamantau, and that inside this mountain, there is the Russian government's extensive bunker, making this just another reason why this town is completely cut off to anyone who isn't a very high-ranking official. In our number one spot today, we have Wittenoom. This place in Australia is the home to a former blue asbestos mine, which is exactly what makes it one of the most contaminated places in the country. I mean this literally. The roads were paved with asbestos, even after the mine shut down in 1966. While this city was once the home to 20,000 residents, the population dropped significantly after the deaths of 300 former mine workers from mesothelioma. Apparently, it was decided that it would be too expensive to clean up the town, so instead the government just declared it unfit to inhabit and took it off the maps. While most people have since left the town, it is said that three residents refused to leave and still remain in the almost completely abandoned town. Coming in number 10, we have the Hiroshima Haunted Peace Memorial. No one has ever forgotten the Hiroshima and Nagasaki incident in which the atomic bomb destroyed the lives of around 140,000 people. The attack took place at the Hiroshima Professional Industrial Promotion Hall, which has now changed to the Hiroshima Peace Memorial. Now, 75 years later, the survivors of the faithful and historic day are old and their stories are fading through the sands of time. The memorial, which is a popular attraction to pay respects and learn about, you know, the devastation that the atomic bomb caused, which is absolutely insane that something like that actually took place. Well, it caused the place to be extremely arid. The place has been claimed to be haunted as the people nearby have heard uncanny videos near the dome. Not only this, but there have been numerous incidents of electronic voice phenomenon where you can actually hear the atomic bomb exploding itself. 
Coming in at number nine, we have Snake Island. With a name like that, who would even want to visit it? And as you probably guessed, it is covered in snakes. This island is apparently home to around 4,000 snakes, most of them being golden lancehead vipers, aka one of the deadliest serpents in the world. It's said that this type of viper can grow up to 18 inches long, and it's so poisonous that one bite can kill you within an hour. As a result, the Brazilian government has banned and anyone from ever going there. If you do, well, chances are you won't make it back alive. Legend goes that a fisherman arrives at the island in search of bananas, but was found days later in his boat dead in a pool of his own blood. Then from 1909 to the 1920s, a family lived on the island to run the lighthouse. But according to another legend, the entire family was found dead after a group of snakes came into their home and attacked them. So like I said before, you don't ever want to go to this island. Moving on to number 8, we have Area 51. Of course this had to be on the list. Area 51 is a top secret government facility that is illegal for the public to visit. Anyone that does try to trespass can be charged, arrested, or even shot to death. This is what happened to a man in 2019. On January 28th, the man attempted to get into Area 51. He was then chased down by some cars for eight miles. When he got out of his car, he was shot dead. Another case would be the two YouTubers that were arrested in September of 2019 after they tried to sneak into Area 51 and were caught recording the premise. I know we all want to know what really goes on in there, like if they got aliens or whatnot, but curiosity kills the cat. Just saying. In our seventh spot, we have the Devil's Hole. With a name like that, maybe it's best you don't visit it. So the Devil's Hole is located in a national wildlife refuge in Nevada. You can tour the area, but access to the Devil's Hole itself is off limits. They have a sign and a fence guarding the area, and the sign reads as so. Due to the scientific importance of this area and its fragile nature, unauthorized entry is prohibited. Yes, they want to protect the ecosystem, but also so it is so dangerous to enter there. So Devil's Hole is like a little hole of water. When you dive in, it's filled with complex underwater caverns. Back in 1965, one night a group of four friends decided to hop the fence and explore the Devil's Hole. It was Paul, David, Bill, and Jack. Jack was on the lookout while the three dove in, but Paul never resurfaced. As a result, David and Bill both went back under to look for him, but then David never resurfaced. To this day, their bodies have never been found. Moving on to number six, we have Ramry Island. Tourists are banned from ever visiting this island, because chances are your vacation will take a deadly turn if you decide to go there. This island is home to thousands of saltwater crocodiles, and they weigh around 2,000 pounds. Even the small ones pose a threat to humans. They have the capability of killing someone twice their size. On top of that, they are highly aggressive and will attack anyone that enters their habitat. In fact, the most number of fatalities in a crocodile attack took place at Ramry Island. In 1945, British soldiers drove the Japanese fighters off the main area of the island, forcing them to flee into the marshy area surrounding the island. One problem, those marshes were filled with hungry crocodiles. As a result, 500 soldiers were killed by these crocodiles. So yeah, maybe don't go to this island unless you want to be crocodile dinner. And of course, there's a number of stories of tourists going to this island and then being attacked and killed by these beasts. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Bouvet Island. Now here's the thing with Bouvet Island. You can visit it, but it would be a death wish if you did. Bouvet Island is extremely isolated and it's almost completely covered by a glacier. Its nearest inhabited land is 1600 miles away. One way to get there is by boat, but it would take very long and you would be facing extreme weather conditions while doing so. As a result, most expeditions are done by helicopter. Even then, if the weather suddenly changes, you're basically screwed because the island is so remote and far away from other pieces of land. But in 1964, a lifeboat was found abandoned at this island. How did it get there? How could this little boat survive crossing the southern ocean? It's a mystery that still baffles many. But also, where did the passengers of the boat go, if they had any? We got no clue, just a couple of theories. And at number four, we have Vortex Spring. Vortex Spring is known for having pretty complex diving caves, but only those that have a diving certificate or are accompanied by an experienced diver can go there by themselves. In the 1980s, 13 people died in the vortex. 
rocks. There's one area in the underwater caves that are considered so deadly that it's blocked off, and people are prohibited from entering there. It's got this creepy warning sign with the Grim Reaper, and it's often locked with a gate. It's just far too easy for people to get lost and drown in there. But that didn't stop Ben McDaniel. On August 18th, 2010, Ben was seen entering the water near the caves and was never seen again. This case is quite strange, like there's a lot of pieces to it. Some say he faked his death because he owed the IRS a lot of money, and also he had a failed marriage, so maybe this was his way of starting over. Or Ben really did get lost in the caves and drowned, but his gear or body have never been found. In our third spot, we have the Bolton Strid. The Strid near Bolton Abbey is said to be the most dangerous dangerous stretch of water in the world. Just by looking at it, you wouldn't even think it's dangerous. I mean, the current isn't even that fast. But below the water surface are strong undercurrents that will toss you back and forth against the sharp, jagged rocks until you die. It's also fairly deep and it could just suck you down until you drown. In fact, it has a 100% fatality rate. Everyone that has gone or fallen in have never made it out alive. Their bodies also have never been found. There are a number of stories of people trying to leap across the river only to slip and fall in. In one case, there was a newlywed couple visiting the Strid. However, upon trying to cross the Strid, the bride fell in and the groom fell in also trying to save her. As a result, there are a number of warning signs all around the area trying to warn people of the Strid's dangers. But of course, a lot of people ignore the signs since the Strid is so deceiving and looks pretty safe. In our second spot, we have North Sentinel Island. The reason why you can't visit this island is because it is home to a tribe that will kill anyone who dares to intrude on their land. They live their own life completely isolated from the rest of the world. In fact, they still live a hunter-gatherer lifestyle. But a man named John Allen believed that with the power of God, he would be able to convert them to Christianity and help them. He believed that this island was Satan's last stronghold on Earth. So in November of 2000, 2018, he headed out to the island. Now, the people that took him there knew of the dangers and really, really, really didn't want to, but he was so insistent that they finally gave in. In fact, they were later arrested for doing so. John's first attempt at making contact with them didn't go as planned. As soon as he stepped foot on the island, several men came charging at him, firing arrows. So he fled. But on November 16th, he tried again. He got a fisherman to drop him off alone and that was the last time anyone had ever seen him. When people went back there for him, they saw the tribe members dragging his dead body with a rope. And in our number one spot, we have the Secret Cave. It was the evening of August 17th, 2005, and five friends were having dinner together. They were Scott McDonald, J. Blake Donner, Jennifer Lynn Galbraith, Ariel Singer, and Stephen Hunley. While eating, the group got to talking about this secret cave, which was a legend where they were from. It's all about this cool secret cave slash hangout spot. Rumor has it, that's where human sacrifices were made, etc. But of course, no one thought it was a real cave. That's when Jennifer said that it was real and that she had been there before. The friends, not really believing her, asked her to bring them there. And so they did. So basically, up in the mountains by Brigham Young University, there was this small opening to a cave. The entrance was in the shape of a Y. But in order to get to the secret hangout spot, Jennifer told them they would have to dive down one area through this underwater tunnel to the other side where there was an air pocket. The tunnel was 15 feet and the gap they would have to swim through was 20 inches wide. So it was just enough for people to squeeze through. On top of that, someone had put a rope in the water so you could just pull yourself underwater with. So that's what the four of the friends did. Stephen Hunley decided to stay back. He waited for the group for about an hour, and then he decided to call for help. And when police arrived, they were horrified at what they saw. So it seems like the group of friends successfully managed to get to the other side, but they couldn't make it back. The police ended up pumping out the water so that they could enter. And that's when they found all four of the friends' bodies stacked up against each other. It seems as if the person leading, who was Jennifer, got stuck on the way out and then she drowned. It would then be impossible to swim over her. So then the second person that went swimming 
was stopped at Jen's body and they couldn't get back out because then the third person was coming in. So everyone was just blocked in this small tunnel. Slowly but surely, all of them drowned in this small dark cave. For safety reasons, this cave is no longer accessible. At number 10, we have Salem, Massachusetts, USA, a town revered by the occult and has a dark enough history to make any horror fan squeal with glee. Salem, Massachusetts was the home of the 1692 Salem Witch Trials. This is where a massive witch hunt led to the hanging of 19 people who were falsely accused of using witchcraft. There are several spots around the town that give off an extremely creepy vibe and have reported hauntings. But the most notorious place is the former home of Sheriff George Corwin. He was the man responsible for spearheading the hunting and capturing of these witches. Not only that, but the people that were captured, he would take them into his basement and then he would torture these people until they confessed to their crimes. Now his ghost and the ghosts of several other people who were tortured by him haunt the Joshua Ward House, which is the building that sits on the land that the sheriff's house used to be on. In our number nine spot today, we have the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone. Back in 1986, there was the tragic event of the accidental nuclear meltdown at the Chernobyl nuclear plant. The aftermath of this disaster took many lives and it also rendered the area unsafe for years to come. While some of the areas surrounding the disaster are relatively safe now, there is still an area called the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone which is strictly forbidden because of the radioactive contamination. You would think that the threat of a horrible death or at least some painful side effects might be enough to keep people out, but that is not the case. Throughout the years, people have continually tried to sneak into this zone to catch a glimpse at what exactly it holds. In our number 8 spot today we have Zone Rouge. This area, also referred to as the Red Zone, is an area of France that is one of the most restricted on Earth. Located in northeastern France, it is said that this chain of uninhabited areas was completely destroyed after the events of the First World War. This area contains a mass amount of both human and animal remains, along with way too many unexploded weapons that have gone on to contaminate the surrounding water and land. This has led to the French government prohibiting any kind of activity in the areas that includes any sort of agriculture cultural or settlement. I mean, I wouldn't particularly want to risk it with an undetonated explosive, so it completely makes sense why this area would be restricted. In our number 7 spot today we have Snake Island. This island is located in Brazil and is one of the most dangerous in the entire world and that is because it is absolutely filled to the brim with snakes. It is thought that Snake Island came to be when the snakes got trapped as a result of the rising sea levels which disconnected this island from the mainland. The reason people aren't allowed to visit is obviously to protect the humans who want to go, but also to protect the snakes that live here as some of them aren't seen anywhere else in the world, likely because of the lack of human interference. There is a critically endangered species of snake called a golden lance head, and on this island there are about 4,000 of them, which is critical to the species being able to continue on. As of now, only a few select researchers and the Brazilian navy are permitted to go to the island. In our number 6 spot today we have Area 51. This is probably one of the most famous of all of the prohibited places, and that is likely because of just how many stories and conspiracy theories are surrounding it. Area 51 is a US military installation that the government insisted didn't exist until 2013. The area is said to mainly be used as a testing site by the CIA and the US Air Force because of its remote location 100 miles north of Las Vegas, but people don't buy it. People seriously believe that this site could be holding things like crashed UFOs, actual aliens, mermaids, you know, conspiracy theory stuff. At the end of the day, whether it's aliens or testing technology, the stuff that they are doing there is super secret and there's a reason it's so protected. That hasn't stopped many, many people from trying to go there over the years, however. I mean, remember a couple years back when people wanted to storm it? Yeah. Good luck. In our number 5 spot today we have Mount Omain. This mountain is the home of the Yamabushi monks and it is famous for its three tests of courage. So. Not everyone is banned from this place, but women sure are. The ban on women was placed in order to help remove thoughts of temptations from the monks as they practiced their strict lifestyle. Here's the thing with this rule though, 
There have been many females who have still gone here. They refer to the ban as a more voluntary situation. Both the temple and the local community call it a request rather than a rule or a law, and the request is in order to respect their tradition as well as, of course, like I mentioned before, to help them. In our number four spot today, we have Morgan Island. This is a place that is also referred to as Monkey Island, and this is due to the colony of about 4,000 rhesus monkeys who call this place home. The thing is, though, the monkeys aren't originally from this south. Carolina Island, they were actually relocated here from Puerto Rico. Basically, these monkeys were living in a sort of research center before moving to this island, but it was becoming overpopulated and some of the monkeys who carried infectious diseases were escaping, which posed quite a health and safety risk. This is when South Carolina stepped in and offered this uninhabited island as a place for these monkeys to go and continue to be researched. There are now laws that prohibit anyone from the island for both yours as well as the monkey's safety. In our number three, spot today we have Bohemian Grove. Bohemian Grove is a privately owned campsite in Monterio in California and it's the home to the wealthy and exclusive Bohemian Club. This club is only for some exclusive groups of men despite the few dire attempts at including women. Every year there is a two week long retreat that the club hosts on the private grounds and while there have been four women who have been invited to the club as honorary members, the women are never invited to the grove. Because of this weird ban and just the entire super strange nature of this whole ordeal, both the club and the grove are part of many, many conspiracy theories. There has been no shortage of outsiders trying to sneak into the grove to see what the heck is going on there and to see if they can get to the bottom of what this secretive club is really hiding. To be honest, there's definitely something sketchy going on with this whole thing because it really just does give off like the weirdest vibes. They also have this weird club motto that says, quote, weaving spy come not here. I'm not sure what that means, but it definitely sounds weird. Just a bunch of guys hanging out and no one else is allowed. I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> Bohemian Grove has entered the chat. They're mad at me. In our number two spot today, we have Metro 2. During the time where Stalin was in power, it is said that he instructed that an underground secret transport system would be built known as Metro 2. This mysterious underground system is said to connect different administrative institutions, and it's even rumored that it contains apartments and different technical rooms. It's sort of like a secret escape tunnel for high level officials. Of course, it's completely blocked off to outsiders or the general public, and while the Moscow Metro administration denies that these tunnels even exist, there was an urban exploration group back in 1994 that claimed to have found the entrance. At this point in time, the existence of only one of the rumored four lines has been confirmed and it is called D6. In our number one spot today, we have the Fukushima exclusion zone. Back in 2011, there was the Fukushima nuclear disaster which struck Japan. Because of this horrible incident, residents located within 18 miles of the plant were urged to evacuate, similar to the Chernobyl nuclear disaster we talked about before. In fact, this meltdown and Chernobyl's are the only two events to receive a level 7 event classification on the international nuclear event scale. Because of this extreme radiation contamination, no one is allowed to enter the premises. Of course, I can't see why anyone would want to, but there are people who want to take the risk. This includes a 27 year old photographer who decided to illegally sneak into the Fukushima exclusion zone. He explained that it looked like a real life version of Fallout. In our number 10 spot today we have Pluto's Gate. This is a site that is located in what was once the ancient city of Heropolis, which resides in what is now Turkey. This site was once dedicated to the Roman god of death Pluto, and an ancient historian named Strabo who once went to this location said that, quote, any animal that passes inside meets instant death. I threw in sparrows and they immediately breathed their last and fell. So yeah. Maybe it's not really an inviting place exactly. Turns out there's more to this than just myth, however. Scientists measured the CO2 concentration at this site and discovered that during the day, this place might be fine, but during the night, the CO2 becomes heavier than air and pools at the bottom, which forms this sort of deadly lake. The reason it's fine during the daytime is because the sun is able to dissipate the gas. It is said that at dawn, the CO2 concentration that was measured 40 centimeters above the floor was at 35%, which would be enough to take a light within minutes. At number 9 we have the Fairmont Hotel in Banff, Canada. If you have never been to Banff, it is one of the most beautiful places in the whole world. There's amazing skiing in the winter and in the summer it turns into a lush green wonderland. 
If you were a ghost, this would be a paradise to haunt. The Fairmont sits on top of a mountain that looks so regal it could double as the Grand Budapest Hotel. It was built in 1888 and it was the center point to increase tourism in the area and it worked. But like any old building, this place has adopted some guests that refuse to check out. There are two ghosts that are responsible for the majority of the ghost sightings, one being that of an old bellhop. He was the employee of the hotel back in the 70s and after he kicked the bucket, he decided that retirement wasn't for him. His ghost has been seen throughout the hotel helping people to this day. Very few people get to do what they love. Why let a little thing like death stop you from sticking to your passion? Another ghost is that of the bride dressed all in white. The story goes that she tripped down a staircase on the day of her wedding and met a grim ending. That is a huge bummer. You're about to make it to the altar and you lose your footing. Oh, That sucks. At number 8 we have the Chinoy Church in Beijing, China. An old mysterious building that sits in Beijing, China. There are several elements to this building that make it an intriguing place for anyone interested in the supernatural. First, no one knows who built the building or who commissioned the building to be built. Almost as if an outside force created the building. Like the devil came to town and was like, yeah, let's build a church. Also on the front door of the building, there is a note that makes it very clear that there are no ghosts inside, which is super sus. Like where I live, there's no note about ghosts because it's just a given. We know there's no ghosts. This place uses the used car salesman approach to convincing people. Yeah, that rickety noise in the back? Oh, that's just something the car makes. It's an added feature. The residence is haunted by the ghost of a young woman who killed herself by hanging during the communist war in China. Some say she did this because her husband was killed at war and others say she was trying to avoid capture. At number 7 we have the Shanghai Tunnels in Portland, USA. A Shanghai tunnel sounds like a place where you go to bet on horse racing and eat the best fried rice you've ever had in your life. But it actually used to be the epicenter for human trafficking in the United States. Located in Portland, Oregon, the tunnels are now run down and unused. Back in the 19th century, people walking through these tunnels would often be kidnapped and then sold overseas into slave labor. Some bars above these tunnels had trap doors in them, which they would use to take drunk people, slip them down to the tunnels where they would never be seen again. A lot of people died in these tunnels before they were sold off into slavery. Now it's said that their angry ghosts walk the halls. Screaming, banging, and even weeping can be heard when you pass through these tunnels. At number 6 we have La Chateau de Brisac. France. We are heading all over the world with this list and now we're heading to a place that has a long rich history, France. It makes sense to waltz right into a castle. Besides being one of the most glorious buildings in all of France, an exciting reason to visit this place is the spectral tourist attraction. Back during the reign of King Charles VII, he was married to a beautiful woman who he unfortunately found out was cheating on him. He wasn't too happy with this so he divorced her. and that was that. I'm just kidding. It was the 1400s. He also had her killed for insulting his honor. That's how they did things back then. When her life ended she was wearing a green dress. Now it said you can see the ghost of a woman in a green dress walking the halls moaning for her lost love. At number 5 we have Morgan House, Kalimpong, India. The estate formerly owned by the Morgans has a rather dark past. The house was lived in by Baron George Morgan and his wife back in the 1930s. Apparently Mr. Morgan would spend a lot of his free time torturing his wife. With them being in India and his wife having nowhere to go, she eventually fell into a depression. Not long after that, she died. The two never had any kids and after Mr. Morgan died, the Indian government took control of the property. It has now been spruced up into a nice hotel, but the terrors of this building's past haven't been washed away. Mrs. Morgan is free from her husband and has no interest in leaving her home. Many patrons of the hotel say they have heard her high heels walking along the wooden floors. At number 4 we have Casa Loma, Toronto, Canada. The most famously haunted place in all of Toronto. It's literally a massive castle that is a 10 minute drive from the world famous CN Tower. It's strange having a massive stone castle built in the early 20th century so close to the downtown core but that's probably why it's so haunted. All the ghosts want to gather there because it feels like home. One of the most haunted areas of the castle are the secret underground tunnels which connect different sections of the property. There have been reports of a ghostly miner who might have died digging the tunnels and a lady in a white dress. 
Also the castle's former owner Lady Mary Pellet has been seen all throughout the building. Some people say they've tried to take a picture of her when she's walking through and she will use her ghostly powers to turn off your camera. Sounds like she's not very photogenic. If you want to give yourself an extra fright you should come check out the castle in October when they turn the whole thing into a massive haunted house. I've been it's a great time. At number 3 we have the Hill of Crosses in Lithuania. The look of this place will make you say oh yeah there are for sure some ghosts in here. This hill has been the site of rebellion, respect and remembering the dead for the past 500 years. People have come here to place crosses as a way to pay good fortune to those who died fighting for the freedom of Lithuania. This practice has made it a safe haven for spirits to walk through and there have been reports of seances performed there trying to contact these dead heroes. There are currently over a hundred thousand crosses piled up on this hill. Back in the Soviet reign they tried to destroy this holy landmark three times. Three. That's three. Three times. But the Lithuanian people stood strong and came back to rebuild it every time. That's a pretty awesome story of solidarity. I know why ghosts want to hang out here. They're like I know my home will be safe forever. At number 2 we have cemetery number 1 in New Orleans USA. This place has been nicknamed the haunted city because it is literally filled with so many graves that you could fill a small theater. There are over 700 graves at this site. You pack that many people into one spot and you are guaranteed some strange spirits walking around. On Halloween it must be like a massive party in there. It would be a giant ghost rave with the coolest people from the last 200 years. The grave that gets the most attention is that of former voodoo priestess Marie Laveau. It said she had the power to influence spirits and now even in death her ghost can gain strength from the graveyard and get the phantoms to do her bidding. I mean that's a good skill to have after you're dead. You're like all oh, you guys you work for me. That's how this is gonna work. And for the number one spot we have the Rose Hall in Montego Bay, Jamaica. A beautiful mansion that used to be the home of the Palmers back in the 19th century. The two were a loving couple or that's what the public thought. Mr. Palmer died one day of suspicious causes but foul play was inconclusive. Annie Palmer took control of the property and people weren't too suspicious until her two following husbands and her parents died all without warning. Now things are getting a little suspicious. The urban legend of Annie Palmer is that she was a witch and she would use dark magic to kill her victims. It said that her evil spirit still inhabits the Rose Hall. A witch ghost sounds pretty serious especially one that has killed people. That's not something you want to disturb for your own entertainment right? Well you totally can. You can take tours of the building which highlight all the legends surrounding the witch of the Rose Hall. And if you really want to bring some bad mojo into your life you can take part in a seance to communicate with the spirit of Annie Palmer. I think the ghost of a murderous witch isn't something I would want to hang out with. Starting off this countdown we have the stairway to heaven. The stairway to heaven or the haiku stairs is a very steep hiking trail that was closed in 1987. It was closed because of lack of maintenance of the trail and it was deemed unsafe. It's considered one of Hawaii's most dangerous trails. But that didn't stop 18 year old Daylin Pua from hiking out there. On February 27, 2015 Daylin went out for a hike. He had previously told his grandmother who he was visiting that he wanted to do so, but she warned him against it. Also, you can get charged if you do trespass, but that didn't deter Daylin. On that day, he told his grandma he was going out for a hike, but she didn't think he would dare to go there. She was wrong. The last time anyone saw him was around 11 a.m. when he sent a photo to his family of him at that location. He never returned home. Of course, there are a number of theories as to what happened to him. Maybe he fell while on the hike since the area is dangerous. But then again, his body or bones were never found. Another theory is that he was kidnapped or killed by someone. In the photo he sent to his family, it said you can see a man lurking in the foliage. Was this his killer? Sadly, we might never solve this case. Number 9, Eastern State Penitentiary, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The castle like Eastern State Penitentiary took solitary confinement to a whole new levels when it was built in 1829. Prisoners lived alone, exercised alone, and ate alone. When inmates were left in a cell, a guard would cover his head with a hood so he wouldn't be seen. The prison had to abandon its solitary confinement system due to overcrowding from 1913 until it was closed. 
in 1970. Although the forms of punishment did not get any less severe, I mean chaining an inmate's tongue to his wrists, that's just one example, a true story. The site's one of most haunted places in America's right now, will welcome thousands of visitors every year, both for its museums and annual terror behind the wall celebration, which features six haunted attractions within the prison walls for Halloween. I mean, when you talk about an attraction inside of a prison, um, no thanks. Well, it was reported paranormal happenings have included dismembered laughter, shadowy figures, and pacing of footsteps. Uh, Sorry, I, I thought I was hearing footsteps behind me right now. Okay, I'm pretty freaked out with this one, so let's move on to the next one. So next up, number eight, we have House of the Seven Gables, Salem, Massachusetts. Now, this house did not steal its name from the classic novel. In fact, it inspired the novel itself. Salem is known for its history of the famous witch trials, and that's where Sabrina Spillman lived. But it happens to be the birthplace of Nathaniel Hawthorne, who used this 17th century house as inspiration for his famous 1851 novel, The House of the Seven Gables. Aside from its beautiful yet spooky facade, the house is surrounded by paranormal activity and ghost sightings, all based on personal experiences of staff. Every October, the house offers spooky tours as well as weekly performances of two plays. The Legacy of the Hanging Judge and Spirit of the Gables. Would you guys see a play in a haunted town's haunted house? Coming in hot at number seven on this list, The Stanley Hotel. Hotel in Estes Park. If you've read or seen The Shining, you know the feeling of this often snowbound hotel. It's the location Stephen King based his Overlook Hotel upon. It may not look like the film unless you watch the 1990s made for TV movie version, which, uh, yeah, I don't think anyone has. I mean, just walking to your room can drain you. So one stiff drink might have you seeing ghosts or a couple kids chanting, red rum, red rum. Number six, we're bringing you Red Onion Saloon Skagway, Alaska, established in 1898. As a brothel for miners during the Klondike Gold Rush, Alaska's Red Onion Saloon, it had a feature that set it apart from other bordellos. It used dolls to help run its business, so always a good sign, right? Well, every day, 10 dolls will be placed on the bar downstairs, each one representing one of the ladies working in the upstairs room. A customer would choose one of the dolls, at which point it would lay down on the bar to indicate that particular workers were occupied. When the customers came back downstairs, the doll would be returned to her sitting position to let other potential clients know that she was available. We'll fast forward to 2019 when the Red Onion Saloon still operates as a bar and restaurant, yet the dolls are still on display and it offers tours of the upstairs rooms which are preserved as sort of like a mix-shaped brothel museum. As if these dolls weren't creepy enough, there were reports of Lydia a former Madame of a brothel haunting the site, complete with cold spots and lingering spells of perfume, rafting through the walls. I mean, all creepiness aside, I'm more curious about the, how this place got named Red Onion. I mean, they could have came up with any other name. Well, let me know what you guys would call this in the comment section below. Give me a name. All right, we're halfway on this list. Number five, we got RMS, Queen Mary in Long Beach, California. This retired ocean liner sailed the Atlantic Ocean from 1936 to 1967. During the first three years at sea, the Queen Mary carried Hollywood celebrities like Elizabeth Taylor. Her days as a luxurious ship were short-lived. In 1939, she was stripped of her amenities and began her second life as a grey ghost, a World War II troop ship. At the conclusion of the war, she was restored to her former glory and traversed the Atlantic for nearly two more decades. On Halloween 1967, the Queen Mary departed on her last cruise, eventually docking in Long Beach, California. California, her final resting place. The ship is reportedly haunted by the spirits of those who died aboard, such as the young sailor who was crushed to death by a door in the engine room and a crew member who was murdered in cabin B340. Number four, Lizzie Borden, bed and breakfast and fall a river. So this location came up on nearly every search on our quest to find this top 10 list for you guys. Well, you've likely heard of the children's rhyme, Lizzie Borden took an ax, gave it to her mother 40 wax. When she saw it, what she had done, she gave her father 41. Well, you can not only visit the scene of that famous 1892 double homicide, you can also sleep at the Borden's home, eat their last meal, Johnny Cakes, a thick corn 
cornmeal pancakes and eggs, in case you were wondering, and spend the last nights in the bedroom where the bodies of Lizzie's stepmother Abigail was found. Someone who stayed there said, I can attest, this home painstakingly furnished to look exactly as it did on the morning of the murders, well that will creep you right out. Better though, the 175 year old property hosts up to 20 overnight guests, in which some of them for some reason, it's a tradition when he goes to this place, they will actually whip out a Ouija board. I mean, I'm not down for Ouija, that is a real life situation that can happen, and let alone whipping out a Ouija board in a haunted place. Finally down to number three on this list, we have Crescent Hotel, Erica Springs, Arkansas. Since its construction in 1886, the Crescent Hotel has served several purposes, luxury resorts, conservatory for young women, junior college, but the strangest mark on its history came in 1937 when it got a new owner, Norman G. Baker. Baker was a millionaire inventor who decided to pose as a doctor despite having no medical training and turned the hotel into a hospital that can cure cancer. Well, he was eventually found out and he was ran out of town, although reports say that his spirits found its way back to the site and found some other wordedly company too. The now operating Crescent Hotel is said to be haunted by at least eight ghosts, ranging from a five-year-old girl to a bearded man wearing Victorian clothing. One ghost is enough for me, never mind eight of them, and children ghosts, I think those were the absolute scariest kind. Number two on this list, Heaven's Gate Mass Suicide Site in Rancho Santa Fe. I mean, when you have the word suicide site, yeah, no thanks, not for this brown guy. The golf course strewn San Diego suburb of Rancho Santa Fe regularly makes the most expensive expensive zip codes in the USA. So it came a stunner in 1997 when the world learned it was the home to Heaven's Gate, a cult whose 39 members drank poisoned Kool-Aid as the hail bop comet passed Earth, believing that aliens behind the comet would rupture their souls to heaven. Yeah, really weird, I'm not making this stuff up. Their bodies were found dressing in black sweatshirts and sweatpants, Nike sneakers, faces covered with purple cloth, and carrying $5.75 in one pocket. A toll of people speculated to catch a ride on the comet. And number one, we have Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, Western West of Virginia. This four botting asylum began construction in 1858 and opened to patients in 1864. The massive structure was designed by architect Richard Andrews to maximize sunlight and fresh air. It was believed that the building itself would serve as a healing environment. It was designed for 250 people housed and 2,400 patients in crowded conditions. I mean, that's a pretty big range going from 250 to 2400. Patients were physically restrained and often given inhumane treatments such as the electroshock therapy and lobotomies, which was very popular back in the day. After more than a century in operation, the facility was forced to close in 1994, which when you think about it wasn't too long ago, within the last 30 years. And it was due to the reforms in mental health and treatment and the deterioration of the building. Hundreds of patients died during the asylum tenure and scores of guests and ghost hunters have claimed they're seeing shadowy figures roaming around the facility. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Lascaux Cave. This cave is located in France and it got itself the title of being a UNESCO World Heritage Site after its discovery in 1940 due to the incredible prehistoric paintings that can be seen on the walls. Of course, this became a popular tourist destination and people were jumping at the chance to see these works of art completed by the early humans. But as it turns out, breathing is not very good for the art. The carbon monoxide that visitors were expelling was beginning to cause damage to these cave paintings and, of course, once they're gone, there's nothing that we can do to get them back. This led to the site being closed to the public in 1963. Now the only people allowed in are researchers and preservationists who work to make sure that the art stays for as long as possible. At number 9, Himuro Mansion, the Grizzly Murders just located outside of Tokyo. Himuro Mansion is believed to be one of the area's places in Japan. This mansion have witnessed some of the most bizarre activities like cult practices and gruesome murders. According to the local lore, the family in this mansion practiced the strangling
handling a ritual which is called a Shinto and this is to seal off bad karma on earth every 50 years. But the ritual got tainted as a lover once saved his maiden from being sacrificed. After this the master killed everyone in the family and then took his own life. The ghost of the family member still lingers in the mansion and tries to attract people so as to complete the taintful ritual. Since then numerous have emerged of odd occurrences happening in and around the house. Blood splatters appear on the walls. Photographs taken of particular window reveals the image of a ghostly girl and perhaps most disturbingly uh, the dead bodies of which would be explorers will they have allegedly been found on the property with rope marks around their wrists. And I'm not sure how much I believe these reports but even so. Not a happy place, the Himuro Mansion. And here's an even crazier plot twist of the story. Many people question if the house even exists. In 2002, Temco released a survival horror video game called Fatal Frame, which was for the PlayStation 2 in the US. Players controlled a young woman named Miku Hinaski, where she searched a haunted mansion for her missing brother, Mafuyu. The mansion, of course, was the Himuro Mansion, and according to the game's opening screen, it was based on a true story. Up next, number eight, Round Schoolhouse, which is a creepy building. Scary apparitions, noisy ghosts, floating lights, irregular shapes, abandoned vehicles, every paranormal activity in the book have been rumored to have happened at the Round Schoolhouse in Hokuedo. The school was built in a distinctive round shape in 1906 and run like an elementary school. However, it shut down in the 1970s and since then it's been abandoned. Soon after, these stories of paranormal sightings started coming in and several paranormal enthusiasts made a beeline to check out these stories. Many of them came back with troubling stories of things they saw and heard and it is said that a few of them returned raving mad and talked incoherently. Perhaps the first report of paranormal activity at the school was an instance of a little girl who was spirited away right in front of her classmates. According to the legend, searches for the missing girl turned up nothing from the police. After the closure, more rumors spread. Coming in hot at number 7 on this list, the old Inaki Tunnel in the spot of a gruesome murder and it's located deep within the mountains of Fukuoka. In December of 1988, the charred remains of a man aged 20 years old was found within this mountain's tunnel. The perpetrators of this gruesome act were reported to be a group of teenage boys. The area also has a history that goes back over 1000 years as a training ground for the esoteric Buddhist practitioners who claim the area to be a spiritual hotspot of lost souls. These claims were later backed by modern spiritualists who visited the mountains area in the aim of recording a television special but probably refused to go further due to the foreboding spiritual atmosphere. The tunnel itself has been sealed off with concrete blocks but an opening in the top of the tunnel still allows entry for anyone foolish enough to climb down. Well this tunnel is no longer in use and it's far off from a beaten path, meaning no assistance would be able to reach you if you were in an emergency situation. Number 6, we're bringing you one of the Bonin Islands in the Pacific Ocean, far south of the Japanese mainland, Iwa Jima Island has forever been ingrained in the culture consciousness as a historic battlefield in World War II. However, its significance doesn't stop there, as it was the home to Mount Suribachi, a 161 meter high volcano and it's been listed as one of the most dangerous active volcano in the world according to the University of Manchester. It is said that there is a chance of this volcano erupting sometime in the next 100 years which would in turn lead to huge 25 meter high tsunami waves hitting the coast of both China and Japan leading to a potential death toll in the millions. The ghost stories of Iwa Jima are not surprisingly related to the 40 day battle waged on the island in which many thousands of soldiers on both the US and the Japanese side lost their lives. Okay we're halfway there. Number five we've got Okikiwa well the shrieking banshee. Within the Himiji castle is an old well with a very intriguing tale of love and tragedy. It is one of the most haunted places in Japan as it's where a ghost appears at night and screams. The ghost is the spirit of Okiku a young girl who served the samurai Aoyama Tessin. 
Aoyama loved Akeku, but his love was not reciprocated in what could be termed as harassment today. He hid a valuable article and blamed it on Okiku. He offered not to punish her if she became his lover, but Akiku wasn't going to have any of it. She refused to accept it. In a fit of rage, Aoyama threw her in the well, killing her. This is why she can still be heard wailing in silence of the night, just screaming over and over again in the well. Number four, Camp Hansen, the lone soldier World War II created a lot of destruction in Japan and left behind many dead soldiers. One such place which has witnessed this is Camp Hansen in Okinawa. The camp is United States Marine Corps base and supports over 6,000 Marines. It is said that a lone soldier appears in a blood-stained World War fatigues and asks for cigarettes from those nearby. This even led to the closing of the Gate 3 where the soldier's ghost has been sighted. And because of this, it is counted among the most haunted places in Japan. And next up, number 3 on this list of places that you should not visit and we're talking about Zoshigeya Cemetery in a place where people are unwilling to visit at any point of the day. Some people have claimed to witness faces and white hands appearing from the trees. Three people have committed suicide at this place and it is believed that their souls remain there and they terrify lone wanderers. Zoshigeya Cemetery is counted in as one of the most haunted places in Tokyo. Number two, we have the Labyrinth, the scary hospital. If you're looking for a haunted health attraction in Japan, but you want something more exciting than the Hughes 10 Bosch, then head to Fuji Q Highland Theme Park. The haunted house at the theme park is one of the best in the country and will truly leave you shook. The house is based on a hospital theme and it is inspired by a real hospital at the base of Mount Fuji where a hospital harvested body organs and they take it from unwitting patients. It is said that these patients come back to haunt the doctors and it is in the presence of the labyrinth. It's 900 meters of pure gore, horror, and tricks that will leave you wondering if this is just an attraction or if this house is really haunted. I'll leave that one up to you guys. Number one on this list, we're talking about Aoki Gahara Forest in infamous both inside Japan and internationally. This place receives the moniker of Suicide Forest due to abnormally high numbers of suicide confirmed within. Furthermore, this forest is supposedly the second most popular place in the world to commit suicide in, only surpassed by the Golden Gate Bridge, which is absolutely insane. Didn't know that fact until doing the research for this video. The popularity of the forest as a suicide spot has led to signs urging those who enter to reconsider and to seek help. Suicides here are so frequent, in fact, that police and volunteers conduct monthly searches for bodies that have chosen the forest for their final moments. Despite their best efforts to find and remove the remains, the chance of encountering a corpse, you know, on a hike is very likely. Within 35 square kilometers of wilderness at northwest base of Mount Fuji, the area is undoubtedly a beautiful landscape but it has been proven to be the final stop to many souls. Mm -hmm. 